got so weirdly obsessed with me that she even plotted to kill my boyfriend. So at the time, me and this girl, let's just call her Olivia, had only been friends for about two years. I mean, we really did everything together. We were with each other 24-7, and I mean, we were pretty good friends. But the only thing about our friendship is she did not like when I had other friends. I mean, she didn't have any other friends herself, but literally she would joke around about strangling my other friends because she didn't like when I gave my attention to anyone else. But honestly, I just thought of it as a joke. And then I started dating this guy, let's just name him Jacob. He was probably the sweetest guy I had ever met, and he was a real simp for me. So we start dating and about four or five months go by and he started getting these texts from a random number. And it would always be cringy things like leave her or you die, get away from her, and like stupid cringy threats. Then one night me and him were just hanging out. Then he gets a text with his exact address saying he had till tonight to leave me or he wouldn't see another day. Then we hear a knock at the door. I'm running out of time like for part two. Hey, I woke up. All of my group chats of uh, my followers had changed their names to R.I.P. this person and basically it was that this girl had passed away from a brain tumor. Immediately my heart was like broken and she's a huge supporter and also she's just a sweet child and as a person that's a sad thing to hear. But then as I started asking the group chat's details about it I, I was like you know how did you guys find out so quickly I just talked to her like yesterday and they were like her mom DM'd us from her account and that to me felt weird because I was like well first of all did her mom know her password second of all if this woman's daughter just passed away is the first thing she's gonna do is get on Twitter and talk to a bunch of people she doesn't know something about this doesn't feel right to me so then I opened up my DMs and I got a DM from her later that day from her mother who was saying this is such and such's mother as you may have heard such and such passed away from brain, brain tumor and you know we're really sad really heartbroken but we just want to let you know that she talked about you a lot and she really cared about you and you made a big difference in her life and at this moment i'm like wow this is devastating but then the more i read it the more i'm like there's a lot of typos in here this seems like a weird thing that a mother wouldn't say because it ended with like you know even in her final days this is the story of the spoiled student so the spoiled student used to be my friend we trusted each other i trusted her and she trusted me we can just call her Anna for now. Anyway, Anna was always about followers. She was at 10,000 followers at that time, and I was at 400,000. She got so cocky that her true colors were showing. Then the next week came by and she had over 100,000 followers. She became cocky that one day she even came up to me in class and said she was going to beat me to 500,000. I didn't want it to be a competition, so I just let it go. Then the next week she hit 300,000. And then she even started making fun of me for playing with fidgets and slime. The principal was overwhelmed with my 400 followers that she even gave me a gift. And that morning, Anna passed by and she overheard our conversation. She even saw the gift. Her face looked mad and she just stared. Then I finally opened the gift and it was a pack of fidgets. Anna was so mad that she tried to trip me and I knew it was her. I looked back at her and she instantly did something on her phone. Have you ever messed up on a slime's color? Definitely yes, I remember one time I was trying to make a big batch of wild cherry slime and I accidentally dyed it blue. Luckily, I always add the colors before I add the scent to slime, so I was able to take some blue raspberry scent and turn this into a blue raspberry icy. Thankfully it worked out, but mess ups are way more common than you think, which is why I get why you're asking. I'm a 32 year old woman who can never go back to my new dentist after two visits because I'm an idiot. My dentist is a very nice and professional man our first appointment was going pretty smoothly until he made some innocuous remark about us being strangers. My immediate reply was, oh, you're not a stranger. You've been inside of my mouth for 20 minutes. I did not intend to make a joke. His face turned red and he was clearly embarrassed but continued on like a true professional. And we were probably both relieved when the appointment was over. I had my second dentist appointment today. I actually mentally prepared myself to be a model patient who didn't say anything weird. He had been working in my mouth for about five minutes when he started to seem really uncomfortable or something. His face was red and he was breathing a little heavier. I was a bit concerned and also confused. Like, how could I have embarrassed him this time? I had hardly spoken. If a website ever asks you these questions, don't do what she did. Once there was a girl named Masha who heard that there's a new service that gives everyone free internet access. So she decided to use it, but this would lead to something horrifying for Masha and her family. After she connected to this internet service, a web page popped up asking her to register some information. But the questions were oddly personal. It asked, what's your usual mode of transportation? With a photo of a bus, a boat, a train, and a plane. Masha took her bike to school every day, so she clicked on the train instead. But the next day, the local news showed that there was a horrific train crash that killed everyone on 
on board. Masha thought that this was a coincidence, but soon she'd realize that she made a deadly mistake. Later, she needed to use the internet again, so she logged back in. This time, it asked, what kind of home do you live in? Along with four different pictures of different types of homes. She clicked apartment, even though her and her family lived in a house. And the next day, the apartment building near her school burned down. The police suspected arson. Then she went back to the internet server one last time. But this time, it showed a photo of her mother, father, sister, and herself with the question, who is your favorite family? Story time. In my old school, I was in a friend group of five girls, including me. Annie, Camila, Jenna, and Emily. We were all like best friends and always had sleepovers on Fridays or on the weekend. But Camila always said that she couldn't make it because she had soccer practice. We all said, it's okay, you'll come next time, even though she never came. And we never thought anything about it. Until one Wednesday afternoon at lunch when Emily went to the bathroom. We were all like, oh my god, we should totally throw her a summer party for her birthday next week, Friday. And everybody said, yes, of course, and we all started planning it. But of course, Camila said, sorry, I have soccer practice, I can't make it. And me, as a straightforward person I am, said, you really can't miss one soccer practice for your best friend's birthday party? She, of course, felt really, really bad and said, okay, fine, I'll go. We were all super happy, but that was obviously a really bad idea. Story time about when my mom caught me doing it with my best friend. I was 16 at the time and there was this new boy that moved in across the street from us. He was super cute and I noticed him right away. My parents were super strict. I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend or even any guy friends and I knew right away that I wanted to at least become this guy's friend because he was so cute. So one day I tell my mom, hey, why don't we take cookies or something to um, welcome the new neighbors in town? And my mom was like, that's a great idea. So we end up going over and we meet them, they're really nice, and the cute boy comes downstairs and he tells his mom he's going to go to Bible study. Well, when we get home, I tell my mom, hey, you know what, maybe I should join a Bible study group too. And my mom was like, great idea. She even told me to go ask him about it since he had mentioned it. One day he's mowing the lawn, so I decided to go talk to him and ask him about the Bible study group. He actually ended up taking me there that same day and we had a fun class. Over the next few weeks, we became really, really good friends, best friends. We told each other everything, but there was always attraction between so when I was a sophomore in high school, I had this teacher who would only let the students in her class use the restroom one time per semester. Well, one day I raised my hand and I was like, excuse me, I don't remember her name, can I please use the restroom? And she was like, no you can't because you've already used the restroom in my class this semester. <laughs> well, excuse me, you can't dictate my bladder. So I'm like all frustrated and I started secretly texting my mom because I wasn't allowed to use my phone in class. And I was like, mom, I'm sitting in class right now, my teacher won't let me use the restroom. And she was like, I'll take care of it for you. And I was like, okay. So like five minutes goes by and all of a sudden my teacher's phone starts ringing and she walks up to it and answers it and she's like, hello? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then she walks up to me like so angry and she like slams the pass on my desk and she was like, since you have to go that bad. And I was like, yeah, I really do. Thanks. And I got up and left. I didn't even have to go to the bathroom. It was just the principle of it. I just roamed the halls.